Well over a year ago, we made the decision we were going to try to get every single Master Chief Collection achievement before Halo Infinite released, and it's really been down to the wire of us picking up these final achievements that we haven't gotten yet, most of them being those lasso achievements that we've put off and struggled through for such a long time. But now, after all of this, we're finally faced with one of the ultimate challenges standing in our way of getting that 100% completion before Halo Infinite's release. This is the Halo 3 Lasso Achievement, and this would be the achievement we need to get the Lasso Master Achievement for completing Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4 on Legendary with all skulls on. Now, Halo 3 Lasso presents a very interesting challenge. Not only is the campaign known for having a more difficult lasso than some of the other lassos like ODST, for example, but there's a lot of lengthy levels and large-scale battles that play a very unique role into a lasso run than something you would experience from one of the older lasso games that have a more linear experience. Tie that together with the fact that time is running out for us to get every achievement, and even if we do manage to get Halo 3 Lasso completed, we're still going to be down to the wire those final minutes trying to pick up those other achievements we still have to get besides the Lasso achievements that have been taking up so much time. So the stakes and the pressure are definitely higher than ever. Okay, but before we jump into this lasso experience, we want to talk about our sponsor for today's video, Vite Ramen. And the team over at Vite Ramen are huge Halo fans themselves and have been really awesome with wanting to support Rocket Sloth and our channel and our content. And Luke and I are pretty big fans of the ramen itself. And with the fact that eating healthy can already be really difficult and finding healthy foods that you can store being a challenge in itself, Vite Ramen makes it so you don't have to worry about either of those things since the ramen is made with healthy ingredients and delicious you the proteins, nutrients, and fiber you need. It's so easy to eat healthy, it's almost like cheating. Okay, and besides the fact that buying Vite Ramen using our link directly supports Rocket Sloth and our channel, here's why you need to buy these noodles. Firstly, it only takes three minutes to prepare Vite Ramen, which is some high quality ramen, and it's still cheaper than ordering stuff like DoorDash or Uber Eats. They're constantly improving their lineup of products, and they recently launched version 3.0 of ramen. And now when you order through our link, you get access to exclusive bundles that come with free chopsticks, a free hooked ramen spoon and two high quality vinyl stickers on top of your Vite Ramen noodles. And with code ROCKETSLOTH, you can save an additional 10% at checkout. And of course, you support us directly as well. So it's crazy to think that this channel is funded by ramen noodles. Like this is the ultimate achievement in life. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this interesting lasso experience. All right, so Halo 3 Lasso, the one achievement that we're going to need to pick up alongside the Lasso Master Achievement, which will put us down to our final few achievements that if we can get through this we'll probably be running trying to get those final achievements up until those final minutes before Halo Infinite's campaign does finally release so if we can get through this you can expect a video a couple of days after Infinite does release because we have to make the video don't worry we are paying attention to the time and we will document how close it ends up getting or even if we fail and we can't pick up all the achievements before Infinite's release but nonetheless we're gonna keep trying Sierra 117 is up first for Halo 3 Legendary All Skulls On, and this level right away is pretty tough for an opening level in Halo 3. It kind of reminded us a bit of Halo 2, maybe not as extreme as Cairo Station, but still, Halo 3's first level does throw kind of everything at you in one level, which does make this opening level much, much harder. Not only is there some intense firefights that kind of start off right away with brutes and just a lot of grunts, but throughout this level, you're going to run into some really challenging areas that you have to kind of progress around, areas where you don't have as much cover and just in general there's a varied set of enemies that can kind of kill you pretty quickly besides the brutes now being the main focus of enemies this time around this level is known for having a lot of jackal snipers which while they're not halo 2 jackal snipers they still can easily pick you off and this time around since we had to assemble the dream team squad of me rocket elijah luke rocket luke and then we brought dim along and since we haven't seen tails since he fell off the cliff in a big team battle game 
game in Halo Infinite, we decided to bring along our friend Sean, 2AM XO, who decided to help us out when he heard we were struggling after Sierra 117. So he'll be there from Crow's Nest to the end. Okay, Sierra 117 though does have some interesting points. So we were kind of moving slow and steady, hanging back and just trying to pick off the enemies, making progress where we could. But the first real challenge was the forest area where there's a bunch of sleeping grunts. Once you kind of start this section, it definitely is just a massive ramp in difficulty because there's so many enemies at the end area where you exit through this forest area that kind of flood in at once. And literally just walking from one cover to another cover leaves you exposed. And the section is one of those sections that can take forever to get a new checkpoint, meaning we would get reset here quite a bit if we died. Eventually we did manage to clear the area and push up, but yeah, this area didn't mess around. The big area where the pelicans are is just this big chaotic mess where you have to kind of quickly take out some of the enemies right away or else you're setting yourself up for a much harder time if the enemies move out of a cluster area. So we're back to the old slow and methodical approach which plays a massive role through Halo Lasso in general and after clearing this section we had to all work together the best that we could to take out those jackal snipers in the forest. After the jackal snipers there's this open area right when Johnson's pelican crashes and there's this kind of area you go under and then back around and there's enemies up top and on the cliffs and there's jackal snipers and brutes and there's just a lot of enemies. Now we first pushed up and took out some of the jackals on the ridge line and I realized I could actually run ahead in the level if I jumped on this rock and then scooted past some of the enemies. I could actually make a quick survival run which did work though it might not have been the best method because it kind of messed up Dim in making sure he had the proper weapons for the final area. So Dim still took it slow despite me being ahead and I kind of actually messed things up by running ahead and hitting the cutscene teleporting everyone ahead and then we had to hard revert backwards so Dim could have the proper weapons that he said he needed for this last area. It was a little bit of a mess. It was a little chaotic. Nonetheless, we did the revert. I still ran ahead because I felt like it was my safest route and then just waited for everyone to catch up. So after that area was a mess, we got to the final section of the level which on lasso means you're pretty much just beginning here because this last area is rough. Not only are there a ton of enemies just everywhere. There's jackal snipers that will wreck you. There's very strong brutes and just enemies all over the place. And these enemies aren't afraid to push you pretty aggressively. And if you get put in a bad spot, you likely will just die and reset everyone because of the iron skull. Also, sniping is not the easiest thing because the blind skull is on, of course. So yeah, this section wasn't necessarily the best. Now, Luke and I pushed up together to try to take out some of the enemies while Dim made his way around to try to make a full push over to where Johnson is. And besides having some terrifying encounters with some brutes at various different occasions, eventually, after a ton of trial and error, Luke and I did find a kind of cool place up on the top of this building where we could throw grenades down at enemies and shoot at some of the enemies and be able to fall back and get some cover as well. This worked for the most part, except when phantoms flew by and shot at us and we just had this terrifyingly awful experience. But this was a key area that kind of gave us a little bit of leeway to not constantly die while Dim tried to push up and get to Johnson by doing a mix of sneaking through the underground pathway, killing some enemies, running past some other enemies, and also killing some enemies that were in his way without alerting some other enemies. It probably helped we were drawing a lot of the attention over on the bridge side of things because Dim was able to get Johnson. And then we just had to make our escape, which meant Luke and I worrying about phantoms again, and we kind of dropped down, ran back up to the trees while Dim tried to make a push over to the pelican, which eventually did work, but this level definitely started things off very, very roughly because this level doesn't mess around and it throws all this stuff at you and literally it would just been the first level and we know from our experiences with Halo 3. Halo 3 just gets more open, more bigger, more large scale as you progress, so things might just get harder from here. Crow's Nest was up next, so fortunately Sean was able to jump in and help us out on this one and while this level does have a reputation of being a long one, starting things off, it it wasn't too too bad. We just kind of pushed up through the tunnels a bit. The first time when you see that warthog explode and a bunch of enemies kind of flood in, we were there for a very long time, mostly because we were incompetent and we kept pushing when we shouldn't have and we were getting shot or grenaded and we died. Literally, we probably could have realistically bypassed this part in half the time if we just weren't messing around, but we're having a good time. We're all laughing and joking. You know, the lasso grind hadn't fully gotten to us yet. We hadn't uh, lost our minds completely 
completely. There might have been a little bit of intentional team killing in there as well, but nonetheless, we did eventually kind of crack down our discipline and make sure we were working together to clear enemies and try to withhold ourselves from dying constantly. Eventually we did clear this section pushing into where the hangar was and while the hangar is definitely an area we thought would be a hot spot or a really hard part to bypass, we kind of did a strategy where Dim, who is just kind of really good at lasso, would go down to the lower area and slowly push the enemies where he could and Sean, Luke, and I would go up into the upper control room and shot at enemies from up there and this dynamic of having one player down below and three players up top who wouldn't die as regularly but also could shoot and help out was actually a really great method surprisingly and this whole section in the hangar didn't take nearly as long as we thought it would so after a lovely little time in the hangar we headed back to the main headquarters and then pushed into the notorious brute room and this room did take us quite a while because these brutes are savages and we didn't have a lot of shields now the one strategy we used to make sure we were well equipped for this area is we all carried plasma pistols into the hallway before opening the next door so when we did go into the battle with all of the brutes we would be able to pop a lot of their shields this turned out to be incredibly helpful even though it was a little tedious carrying plasma pistols back and forth still our shields weren't in the best shape so a lot of the times those brutes could just hit us with one or two shots or a brute shot in the right angle and we would die and have to revert constantly and you don't get a checkpoint really until you've cleared all of the brutes and the final chieftain and they also call in reinforcement brutes during all this as well so there's a lot going on and it is challenging but we did manage eventually to kind of spread out on the left and right sides and push up to try to take out the enemies some of us would shoot plasma pistols and some of us would use the br or a carbine to try to pop the brutes off and clear this section going into the next area Dim talked about our two options, which was to do a glitch launch all the way across from this platform to where the elevator is, or to fight our way through the barracks with a ton of enemies. Now, none of us knew how to do this glitch pressure launch, and Dim said he didn't know how to do it, he had only done it two other times before, so... After saying that statement, Dim kind of accidentally nominated himself to try to pull off this pressure launch and we sat there patiently while he tried and tried and tried again until he actually managed to pull it off. So while Dim definitely didn't want to try to do this glitch, he definitely was capable of doing it. And see what peer pressure can do? It can launch you across a giant ravine. So. There we were. We were able to just take the elevator up, teleport the rest of us over, and we were over at the jetpack brute part already, which was going pretty well pace-wise. This level is a long level, so we were ready for this to take a long time, and it definitely did take a long time, but we were moving. All right, this section mostly involved us all picking hiding spots to pick off at the brutes. Sometimes a brute over by where Luke and I were would just kind of jetpack off of the map and die while Dim was taking out some of the other enemies. So we were helpful in our own ways, but after the first couple of enemies died, we did end up all pushing the lower area while Dim was up top baiting some of the brutes towards him. And we're able to get a lot of assassinations off by doing a good sidestep with the brutes something that we started using in ODST a lot and it's something that plays into a massive part in Halo 3 lasso so kind of getting into the feeling of sidestepping a brute and punching it in the back is something that's pretty integral to doing a Halo 3 lasso after this area we had to go back and activate the bomb at the headquarters and as it turned out I was the only one who had invisibility which Dim said was really important for some reason so fortunately I ended up saving it until this part and I I was then in charge of quickly popping invisibility, running into the room, hitting the button, and exiting, which is really good because there's a ton of enemies in this room that you don't want to deal with if you don't have to, and just being able to bypass it is definitely a great option. Honestly, it was great having Dim around because Dim would actually study before we did some of these levels, and he would watch Halo Completionist's guides and make sure he knew the strategies because Luke and I just never seem to learn, and we just like to just figure it out as we go. So it was nice to have kind of a tour guide at times dim who would throw himself into some of the worst situations and then we could just kind of watch through him and see how awful it could get it was cool nonetheless after this section we just had to make our exit and at this point i had to kind of teleport everyone past us but my invisibility was running out so i had to run past a bunch of enemies who were shooting at me but everything was shaking and exploding at the same time it was really chaotic but nonetheless i did manage to get to the trigger that would teleport everyone to me now 
I may have accidentally team killed everyone a couple of times accidentally, but nonetheless it was a positive experience and we were getting close to beating this level despite you know, some of the friendly fire that was happening because we'd been on this level for such a long time and we just, you know, needed something different. After that, we were able to push our way back into the hangar again and we kind of all sprinted crazily into the elevator hoping to get in there without getting killed. Eventually, we got a run where we were able to do that and from there, you can finish off the level and drop down into Savo Highway if your teammates don't kill you in the process of, you know, falling in the elevator part. So next we're going on to Savo Highway and this level is a bit interesting. You're in a much more open space, you have access to vehicles, so we're feeling optimistic and things did get a little bit interesting as we started off as there are a lot of enemies that can kind of just shred right through your warthogs. So you have to be careful about that. For the most part, this level can be really straightforward, especially if you're coordinating with your teams and you're kind of hanging back and shooting the enemies from afar with the turrets, even despite how inaccurate they can be. The first chokehold though in this level is definitely when you get to that first shield you have to clear out. There is just a lot going on. There's a lot of enemies and they're quick to just gun you down really fast. The shade turrets especially can be a pretty big threat. So we kind of had to work together to make sure we were taking out the enemies slowly and methodically, especially because some of the brutes blocking that shield door kind of dip in and out of the shield, which gives them cover, making them a little harder to kill. And if you get too close, you can kind of risk dying, which puts your whole team back to the last checkpoint. So we did have a process of waiting here for quite some time but eventually we were able to clear out this area and open up the shield pushing through to the next part of the level now from here it gets a little bit easier there is a lot of enemies in the next area so we were just trying our best not to get spotted by a bunch of enemies and die in the process we did notice that you can kind of sneak past a lot of the enemies and avoid fighting which was kind of our main strategy and those who did get through just teleported the others forward so things are actually going well this level was kind of moving along really fast we ran into another bit of a problem though after we got around to the next area where there's the wraith and just a ton of choppers all over the place. Now Dim was pretty adamant that we should take the wraith and use that to clear out this area and progress to the end of the level and while it was a time consuming process with a lot of trial and error and Dim dying a lot trying to hijack the wraith and do it the right way where the wraith wouldn't blow up, it did proved to be pretty useful because even though it was a very time consuming process, the Wraith was incredibly useful at clearing out some of those choppers and then driving that end section down the road was incredibly helpful having a Wraith to lead that charge. Now at the end section, when you get there, all you have to do to finish this level is A, kill the shade turret and then B, break the shield and C, have one player stand at the wall at the very end of the tunnel. Now this ended up being an extremely long process because we kept trying to just gun our way straight to that wall as soon as we got the shield door open. And while that would have ended the level quicker, we just kind of were throwing ourselves in front of fire a lot and we died a lot. So eventually Dim said, hey, let's just take it slow. And he did. And then he just yeeted his wraith straight in there and almost died, but did in fact end the level. And we were able to progress to the storm. Okay, the storm's interesting because some sections of the level aren't too bad. You can progress, get a couple checkpoints, things are going great, and then some sections of the level are incredibly, incredibly difficult. A lot of people talk about the Ark and the Covenant as these really challenging points for Halo 3 Lasso, but the Storm definitely should not be overlooked because this level definitely kicked our butts and we spent so much time here. Okay, the individual hallway sections when there's just few enemies, you can use your regular Lasso tactics to pick off the enemies. The real parts that end up being a big struggle is this first big open area where the AA Wraith is and there's just a lot of enemies, a lot of ghosts and once again if a ghost is adamant enough at chasing you down and gets you, you die and the Iron Skull puts everyone back to last checkpoint. And since there's four of us trying to tactically take out all of the enemies, it happened on multiple occasions where one of us ended up getting chased down by a ghost and we would try our best to hide or avoid it or take the ghost out but we ultimately would die. So this was definitely a part that we were stuck on for a long time just trying to get into a method where we weren't dying but slowly but surely we did eventually get a run where we were able to take out all the ghosts and the AA Wraith which was a big relief just clearing this area out finally but there still was a lot more to do we had to push up through the next set of tunnels and then you get to the big area where there's more stuff going on more enemies that we have to worry about and to make it better 
This is the section where that giant scarab comes in. Okay, so a lot ended up going into figuring out what we were gonna do here. We first slowly tried to take out all of the enemies that were just driving around. Dim utilized the missile pods to take out a ton of the enemies because as long as those don't get detached, you actually have unlimited ammo, which is a really big deal. And it also was really useful when we got to the part where the scarab dropped in. Okay, from here, a series of different things ended up happening because we were all spread out right when the checkpoint hit where the scarab comes in. We had to kind of work with what we had and essentially at this point Dim was doing a really good job on that missile pod taking out a lot of the enemies so he was going to focus his shots on maybe trying to clear some of the enemies that are on top of the scarab and kind of protecting the main battery. During this time Sean didn't have too much shields with his elite so he ended up giving me his rocket launcher and I would try to jump from that upper elevator all the way on top of the scarab and make a push inside and use the rocket launcher if I had to to maybe knock a brute off or kill a brute so that I could try to access the back battery and take out the end of the scarab. Luke stood back trying to do some defense or just staying out of the way so he didn't die in the process which is obviously a really important strategy if you're ever going to run lasso with the group is just kind of knowing when to just hang back and let everyone else give it a crazy go. And while it did take quite a few times we did eventually manage to have a run where A I didn't go flying off of the scarab, B there weren't just eight brutes chilling in the battery room, or C I just die for some reason in the process. Nonetheless, eventually we did manage to take the scarab out, though it was very challenging. So after the scarab was cleared out, there still was a lot to go. And this next section ended up taking us forever. The indoor area where you kind of go through the foundry and there's a ton of brutes is really brutal. No pun intended. Just the enemies can just completely destroy you. And it's just hard to stay alive in any real scenario. So it's just one of those parts where you just have to push up real slowly and kind of start to memorize where all of the enemies are the more you pass and fail over and over and over again. That's kind of the thing with Lasso in general. You just learn as you go. And eventually you can start to make some progress. So nonetheless, we pushed up. I tried to give good weapons where I could to some of the random Marines or soldiers nearby because they can utilize them with unlimited ammo, which can be a big benefit. At the part where all the hunters are, it's kind of a big mess, but we all spread out and kind of got into a routine where we could take out those hunters first. It took a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. After clearing the hunters though, the last little stretch of level wasn't as bad as I thought it would be because you can snipe the core out of the AA gun and that makes it a lot better. I mean, we didn't really snipe it. We just all shot our various plasma pistols across the map up to the thing until finally it did blow up and we were able to end the level. Then Floodgate is one of the easiest lasso levels of all time which is really good news after how hard the storm was dim was very confident that he could run through this level in less than 10 minutes he was wrong <laughs> we died quite a few times dim blamed it on some weird rng but essentially this whole level there's only a handful of enemies you actually have to fight you can run past a lot of them you can gravity hammer a bunch of them in this section which makes it easy so all in all it's just a mad run to the end of the level when you get to this long section there is some flood that pushes up and when you're doing it solo you can kind of run past them but with a group of four it's better just to shoot the br and clear them out and then push up but otherwise this level actually wasn't that bad it took us maybe 20 minutes before we did finally beat it. So next we were diving headfirst into the arc, which definitely has a reputation of being one of the more difficult lasso levels, specifically because the arc and then also the covenant, the level that follows the arc, both are known for being pretty lengthy levels. So tying that with lasso, we knew we were going to be in for a little bit of a long while. And starting things off, it definitely became apparent why the arc has this reputation. This first area with all of the sniping you're supposed to just easily do isn't all that easy when you first of all, can't see your reticle. And second of all, in my case, since I was the Master Chief as player one, I have a regular sniper rifle, which is not very effective with the tilt skull activated. So I was mostly reliant on Dim, Sean, and Luke to take out some of the bigger enemies. And then on top of that, when you do manage to finally get a checkpoint after the first area, there's another big area where you're supposed to pick off more enemies and hunters show up, and it's definitely a bit more chaotic. Now, fortunately, out of my boardroom, I decided to start running around 
around and trying to find shortcuts and Luke and I actually managed to time the phantom that's leaving with us jumping up on this ledge here and making a push to try to take out the grunts that are coming out of the inside of the cave alongside the one brute that's leading them while Dim and Sean tried their best to distract the hunters from shooting at us so we could kind of bypass the whole hunter encounter which was really useful it did take us quite a bit actually at this checkpoint we were stuck for a while because a lot can easily go wrong but eventually we did manage to clear those enemies effectively and push up going through the tunnel and getting to the outside section now out here it's a whole nother story first of all there's a bunch of brutes and grunts just kind of roaming around which isn't too bad but after you clear out some of those enemies some prowlers with a bunch of brutes roll up and they definitely mean business and can just rip your shields and health apart and kill you and with the iron skull of course one person dead everyone goes back to the last checkpoint which definitely makes it a whole lot of fun now during this process while we were also pinned down in this area for quite some time we did learn that if we throw a sticky grenade at that second prowler for whatever reason it almost guaranteed that all of the brutes would jump out which definitely made aiming at them and picking them off a little bit easier and for the most part this section became this long drawn out process where we all spread out and just try to take shots at the enemies clearing them the best that we could once we finally did get those brutes off of the prowlers and we made the push into the next area where there's even more vehicles and more chaos where once again we can't just drive past everything because we'll just get ripped to shreds so we had to try to tactically take out all of the enemy vehicles and the enemies we did end up using a turret to shoot at all of the enemies all the way across so we wouldn't have to deal with them later which was an incredibly good idea which with this lasso series is something that definitely can be few and far between okay next up we were pushing our way around to where a fourth chopper is because there's only three choppers that you can easily grab up in this section now at this point I was driving up on the rock wall so I can get a good view of everything that was going on and I fell to my death so I had to be careful about not doing that because I got a checkpoint where I was constantly falling to my death and I didn't want to keep us reverting I did manage to jump out and slide down the mountainside thus stopping us being randomly reverted but yeah I'm pretty sure Luke Dim and Sean were confused as to why when there was no enemies nearby we were reverting to a checkpoint a couple of seconds earlier okay then the next hardest part by far is after you push your way with the choppers around some curves and take out some of the enemies along the way you get to this big area that you're supposed to completely clear out before the forward unto dawn rolls in and boy oh boy did this section take absolutely what seemed like forever to manage to clear out and progress now there definitely were multiple occasions where we did manage to clear out a lot of the enemies thanks to dim just really trying his best to take out as many enemies from a long range as possible he had more patience than any of us and that was great we've had on multiple occasions most of the enemies killed and then a few little accidents happened here and there right at the end where we would probably have gotten a checkpoint if we would have just killed one more enemy but we don't need to talk about that so we definitely had to give it a few more goes and yeah it, it was a little bit rough but dim did point out that we could use those aa wraiths if we took turns punching the backs of them to get our shields back up which would be really beneficial in the next section. So we did need to do that correctly and it probably did end up saving us quite a bit of time actually having shields going on for the next part. Okay, next section, they drop off three tanks. I volunteered to sit out riding in the tank or driving a tank and I just rode in the turret and watched Sean, Dim, and Luke do the rest of the work where pretty much they had to clear out all of the enemies in the opening section before we would go into the actual structure itself. That was going really well. We managed to clear in decent enough time with a few hiccups along the way and when we were inside activating the light bridge to move all of the UNSC forces from one side to the other so we could go do the big you know scarab battle I may have accidentally fallen off the map reverting us to a checkpoint all the way back when we were still outside for whatever reason the game didn't give us a checkpoint on the inside section so yeah we got pushed back quite a bit so then we ran it again and this next time around I was careful not to fall off the edge of the map and we're able to activate that light bridge going on to the next section of the level now for whatever reason when we got to this part of the level the scorpions typically are pretty useful here because you have three of them that you can kind of use to take out all of the enemies and the lasso was probably a pretty cool idea to use three scorpions but for whatever reason we got unlucky and only two of them came out we never really found out what happened to that third scorpion it just never showed up so we were already down a scorpion going into the section and even with that 
while it seemed discouraging and we were nervous that we wouldn't be able to progress or we would just get stuck because there's a lot of heavy firepower here and a giant scarab we have to take out we were worried that we would almost be in a soft lock position without having that third scorpion we did manage to actually make it through without too much of a problem we kind of all spread out we used a gauss hog where we had to and eventually i managed to find a wraith that was just operable like all the enemies died in it but they left it standing so i got to drive that for a bit which was a little bit useful when we were trying to figure out what approach to use on the scarab now honestly the main great way to do this is using the scorpion tank to shoot out the back of the scarab and we could just blow it up that way something that way back in the earlier days of this rocket sloth youtube channel we didn't know you could do and everyone in our comment section flamed us because we didn't realize you could shoot the back off but now we know look how far we've come guys who would have thought? So boom, we took out the Scarab. We were feeling good about that and we could turn our attention to making our way up the ramps and get back inside of the structure. Now at this point, when we finally were pushing into the structure, we just got some really, really terrible network lag or whatever it was, just giving us some of the choppiest experiences that we've had just in general. Seems like Halo 3 really struggles with that sometimes on the Master Chief Collection, but I also remember that still being an issue back in the 360 days. So it would be nice to see that tightened up one day because nothing's more terrifying than being hours into something like a lasso and then you have this new fear that you might just randomly get disconnected because Halo 3 seems to be imploding on itself. Nonetheless, we pushed on. Sean really had to kind of take it real slow because it was just hitting him the hardest. It kind of made us a three-man team when Sean couldn't do too much. And for the most part, we just tried to trick a lot of the enemies and sneak in and go for the back punches as fast as possible and avoid too much combat which actually ended up working really well in the first room nonetheless we pushed our way through getting to the outside part hitting the switch where then a phantom comes in and starts shooting at us where we had to completely get out of the way as soon as the cutscene ended or we would get ripped apart by some plasma turrets and then we had to make that final stretch the final push down the stairs where there's more enemies along the way that we had to kind of take out then when we got outside dim was feeling confident as ever running out to where all the brutes were with his invisibility and made it a point to back smack the brute chieftain first which obviously made a lot of sense and it did make taking out all of the other little brutes a bit easier because a chieftain is kind of this core force to be reckoned with and if you don't back smack him especially in lasso you have a really hard time getting his armor pieces off so after that we just had to focus on popping off the other brutes like the jetpack brutes and for this we just used plasma pistols to try to pop off the armor and then go for a quick headshot if our aim would let us and after that we just cleared out the last enemy some jackals ran in we cleared them too and we somehow managed to beat the arc which whew, this level while it did take us you know two and a half hours to beat on lasso almost felt like six hours at times just the way that the sections of the level are divided into these very long encounters it often felt like we weren't making significant progress throughout the whole thing so with that finally finished we were going on to the covenant another level that also has a reputation of being incredibly long and challenging for lasso now interestingly enough though the Covenant ended up not being absolutely the worst thing ever, but it still was pretty hard. Now, right away on the Covenant, you are met with a ton of enemies that will just completely throw all the grenades at you. They'll shoot you. They'll do whatever they can. We decided just to skip all of this by just walking in the water away from all the fights, you know, picked our battle on this one. And then we just walked all the way up the hill, which did make that whole first area kind of easy. We just skipped it, so that wasn't too bad. When we got over to the entrance to the first tower, this is where the challenge really began. Dim managed to grab a ghost to shoot at some of the enemies, and I still had my Spartan laser from the beginning with full ammo, which I used to take out the Wraith. Now this section, we'll be honest, we died a lot here, having to revert multiple, multiple times. But after a lot of trial and error, our perfect run ended up being when Dim used the ghost to take out a lot of the enemies. I used the Spartan laser to take out the Wraith and for whatever reason I got plucky and managed to take out the turret and the driver and keep the Wraith intact which would end up being really useful. And while all this was going down Luke took out the shade turret and I don't really know what Sean was doing. I'm sure he was helping, but he was there too. So after clearing out those prowlers which were an absolute pain 
Seriously, they just they just are the worst part of all of this. They can just wreck you and they just are so tanky and beefy. It's just not necessarily the most fun. But after that, I felt safe enough to try to make a push for the Wraith, which was helpful in clearing out all of the enemies that are guarding the front door of the tower. And we kind of just all hung back while I shot my shots in there. And then from there, we made our push inside of the tower. And from here, Luke picked up an invisibility, which would come in handy later on. And we just did some quick parkour to jump up the elevator and go straight up to where all of the brutes are. Now, for the most part, you can back smack a lot of the brutes, which does help a lot here. And these aren't the strongest brutes with the exception of the chieftain. So just taking them out in general wasn't too bad. The big thing was I wanted to try to back smack that big brute chieftain before he activated his invincibility. So then I could pick it up and use it at a different time, which definitely came in handy when we needed it. And after we flipped the switch, we had to make our way back down the tower. And this is where Luke used his invisibility to bypass all of the incoming enemies that come running in right after you hit the switch. And he made his way outside and all the way to where it would teleport the rest of us over to Luke. From there, we took a transport warthog, which unlike ODST, not everyone gets to ride in, so we had to stand on top, and drove all the way back down to the beach where the hornets are. Then we ran into a pretty big debate as to what we should do moving forward with this level. Dim wanted to go the slower approach of just shooting all of the banshees down and taking out every single enemy in the entire area one by one, and I felt like you could bypass this section without fighting anything. So I just wanted to go for it. So there was some debate over what the best strategy would be. We went with Dim's strategy first, where we tried to take out all the enemies, but then Dim ended up dying and it took like five minutes before we even got as far as we did. And then we got pushed back to last checkpoint. So then everyone was kind of in favor for at least trying just running past all the enemies because we didn't want to just sit there for five minutes again or whatever. And we did get a little bit of progress just kind of flying all of the hornets low to the water and avoiding all the big enemies. And after a few tries of this, we did manage to all get our hornets parked over by that third tower that you have to enter. And while it was very hot coming in and we had definitely a few hiccups along the way where we had to reset multiple, multiple times, we did eventually get everyone in a safe spot where I then activated my invincibility, running past all of the enemies in the main area and pushed my way inside. Now, meanwhile, Luke, Dim, and Sean were outside having no idea what I was doing. They just kind of hung out there in their hiding spots while I was trying to find a way up to the elevator, sneaking past two hunters and a crowd of buggers. I ended up just sticking all of the buggers and got a big multi-kill, which made running past the hunters a little bit easier. And I just jumped up on the elevator and went up and then by then it teleported everyone back on me. So then we had to do another set of brute fighting. This one was a little bit harder because the brute chieftain has a turret instead of a gravity hammer. So going for a back smack isn't necessarily as easy. And there's a bunch of invisible brutes as well. We did manage to pick off the invisible brutes first and then we just kind of fired everything we had at the brute chieftain and dim lit him on fire that actually worked out pretty well going back down the elevator we did run into a problem because all of those enemies that we ran past were still downstairs and then there was more enemies and the flood yeah we thought we were stuck here it wasn't going very well we thought that maybe we should have gone for that slower approach taking out all of the enemies because now we had triple the enemies that we maybe would have had if we would have done it a slower way but i was adamant that we could just run past these enemies too just run away from your problems if they come up and while I don't know what the, the morale of the group was at this point, I feel like there was maybe some doubt. We, uh, we kept trying and trying, and eventually, when we all decided to run together out and just kind of punch a couple enemies on the way, and we all split up, we finally did get out of this hallway area, though it did take us maybe 20 minutes being stuck in this downward elevator room trying to escape. But when we all split up and went different directions, it seemed like we were getting our shields up by punching some of the flood just enough and the brutes were kind of spread out because we all cut off in different directions. It did manage to work and it was very satisfying that we all were able to run out together and escape that torturous room despite 
all of the chaos that had ensued trying to figure out what the best strategy was for this level. So when we all escaped from the room, Sean and I were on the left side and Luke and Dim were on the right side by all of the vehicles. So they pushed up a bit, clearing out the enemies in the canyon area, which then teleported Sean and I over. And then things were kind of looking up. We had a Warthog, we had a tank, things were going well. Dim's really a good shot with the tank. So he was just popping off, taking out all of the enemies up ahead. And honestly, we we're just driving around the Gauss hog having a good time but we were taking out some of the smaller enemies that were big threats too there's some fuel rod gun enemies that uh don't mess around for sure so we we were doing that at this point it was pretty clear the intensity of this level was probably behind us because we pretty much worked as a great team getting to and through this next section where dim and sean jumped in the hornets to go take out the scarabs and luke and i stayed back with the tank and the gauss hog to try to be supportive and have some support fire and this actually worked out really well we got both of those scarabs knocked out relatively quickly and pretty much without any headache i don't think we actually got reset more than maybe twice in this whole process so that was a pretty good run for us and after that we made our way inside we partnered up with the flood and from here it was just a little bit more of a slow methodical approach in that first bridge section where there's the most enemies and this just kind of took a bit of trial and error we were kind of limited on what types of weapons we had at this point we probably could have paid more attention to this when we're out in that snowy area but we were just hyped to be making progress we didn't think about how much ammo we had or what type of enemies we'd be facing off in the next section so we kind of just bit the bullet on that and took our time going through this and after the first little bridge area you get inside for the first time the next two sections are much much easier so we just kind of slowly pushed our way through all of that you know said goodbye to the prophet of truth and then on our way out there's a lot of flood and sean was gone or afk for a minute and we kept dying a little bit we had to try to protect him the best we could right after the cutscene ended every time and then dim would try to make a run for it and then we would die and it was a mess but then sean came back and then i think dim just ran through and killed everything on the way i can't really remember nonetheless we're only stuck here for a couple of minutes before we made our way to the other side of the hallway and thus the covenant was over and we just had two levels left to go before halo 3 lasso could possibly be completed but now we were looking at cortana and Halo as the next two levels that could be the main levels blocking us before getting this achievement. At this point, we were feeling confident that we were getting very far along with just two final levels left to go. Cortana was a level Dim felt really optimistic about because of the Black Eye Skull. Being able to use the sword to stab the flood does regenerate your health, which means in some cases, you can actually gain your health back faster than you would in a regular legendary playthrough because you just have to melee to activate your shield shield recharge. Now the big problem is, is any of the flood enemies that can shoot, do shoot and will kill you quickly. So a lot of this level was us just sticking together and trying to sword enemies, or if there was a narrow pathway, one of us would run in and try to clear it out quickly. And we let that one person use the enemies to regen their shields. Because if you're all fighting the same flood together, you may just slash your teammate and kill them. And with Iron Skull, that puts everyone back to the last checkpoint. So we didn't want to do that so things were mostly slow but steady and most importantly consistent through this level the main part where we kind of got into a choke that was hard was on the way out after we got cortana and there's all these enemies everywhere there's flood shooting at you which isn't fun and on top of that you have to hit these generators there's just a lot going on it is really challenging eventually what ended up working was we kind of all spread out in like a fan after coming out with cortana and tried to take out some of the shooting enemies in the middle area and the far area first before even trying to figure out what to do with the generators you have to blow up. Once we were able to clear this area, it just kind of became this mad sprint to the end of the level, which surprisingly Cortana wasn't all that bad of a level for Halo 3 Lasso. But all of this culminated to Halo on Halo 3. And right away, we kind of already had a strategy on what to do on this level because we've played this level multiple times doing multiple different challenges. This actually was a level we're very familiar with, even though we were gonna be playing it on a difficulty unlike anything we've done before. So first things first, we know that there is a way you can grenade jump from the side and bypass the entire entranceway of the level where you have to walk up all the ramps and fight all of the flood. The problem is, 
when you have the black eye skull on, you can only regenerate health if you melee an enemy. And because of this, if you do a grenade jump, you can't actually do a second jump or the next required grenade jump because your health hasn't recharged yet. Which means no matter what scenario we would try to do or what group combination to get up top, one person would have to be left behind anyways. So instead we decided to split up into teams of two where Luke and Sean would stay behind just for this first part and Dim and I would push up under the tower and try to get some of those jumps pulled off. Now I did end up grabbing a gravity hammer and I was able to manage to skip doing a grenade jump on the first jump by using a gravity hammer, which is great, though it was probably something only I was able to do because I was the host of the game. And in general, if you're not the host when doing Halo co-op, the other three players typically have some level of input delay. So doing tricky jumps like that is a lot harder on online co-op. So we kind of bypassed a lot of the flood right away, trying to avoid them and not draw their attention and also kill them where we had to. And while this took multiple, multiple tries and kind of practice lining up some of these jumps, essentially we would get up to the wall and Dim would jump on my character's head. I would then bounce him up to the upper level and then I would stand on the taller part of the snow, gravity hammer jump backwards onto the platform where Dim was. And then I would run up to the ledge and give him a boost up to the ledge that gives him access to climb all the way up to the top. Then from there, I would do a kind of tricky jump where you have to jump kind of diagonally onto this ledge. And then you can walk all the way up to the very top of the level and then just drop down and you can climb up to where Sergeant Johnson is. This took multiple tries, multiple deaths happened, a lot of accidents, a lot of mess ups, but we had a solid strategy. So while it took some time, we were constantly optimistic that we knew what we were doing. When we got to the top, we did get a checkpoint and by Sergeant Johnson, there's a glitch you can do where if you kill Sergeant Johnson and you take his Spartan laser and then you kill him again and take his second Spartan laser, that second Spartan laser actually has unlimited ammo, which is super useful in this spot. You can actually possibly get away with doing it another time and get a second Spartan laser, but my shields weren't the best at this point and I just needed to hide so I wouldn't get shot at by the flood. So Dim grabbed the Spartan laser and started clearing the enemies here, which is much easier than trying to survive on that main platform. So finally, after quite a while and a few times where we died because there are still those annoying flood guys that can just shoot up to us, we cleared our way and we were pushing inside to go battle Guilty Spark. Now, interestingly enough, with Guilty Spark, he only targets the Master Chief if no one else shoots at Guilty Spark. So that meant I was in charge of dodging Guilty Spark whenever he was shooting at us, just until Sergeant Johnson fires his extra Spartan laser and shoots at Guilty Spark. And then from there, we could run up, grab the laser and take out Guilty Spark without too much of a problem. We were making pretty good time at this point. We're about 40 minutes into the level by the time we had gotten past this section. And as we were exiting this area, we realized that Sean must not have watched our video where we talked about glitches that crash Halo because he didn't push up fast enough with the rest of the group. He was looking at some cosmetics that were for sale in Halo Infinite. And there's a glitch in Halo 3 that exists likely from the original 360 version, but if you're playing co-op and three players enter the outside section, the fourth player stays behind at where the spawning point is, the game will just hard crash. And after all of this, our level hard crashed and we were sent back to the main menu of the Master Chief Collection with none of our progress saved. So after all of that work, we had to restart our game and jump back into it again, doing everything all over again, more or less the same way, but it was really frustrating to have all that progress kind of torn away because of a glitch that still exists from all the way back in the day. But nonetheless, there was nothing we could do. We had to get this achievement done. So we just kind of jumped back into it and we're still feeling pretty good despite everything that had happened. So we repeated the steps from the beginning of the level and pushed into the inside section, fighting the boss again. And then we entered this final stretch of the level. And this part was rough because on the way out to where the main doorway is, where you go up into the cliffs, we just weren't getting a checkpoint for the life of us, which was really frustrating because we would push all the way into the main tunnels. We'd sometimes bring the ghosts with us. We had everything going pretty 
well and then we would die in the tunnels and not get a checkpoint and we were pretty sure you get checkpoints there so we had to continuously reset over and over and over again until just finally the game gave us a random checkpoint at the doorway in the cliffs and from there things got a little bit easier clearing out this hallway isn't all that bad but if you don't have a checkpoint it can get really really frustrating so from there dim shot at some of the enemies and i actually pushed the ghost in there and tried to splatter some of the ones that he couldn't kill right away which did help i then yeeted myself through the hallway with all of the other flood forms that are in there and somehow i managed to survive so that was cool and then from there we began the final push to the end of the level where we got to the warthogs and we decided to split up into two warthogs where dim was driving on warthog one with luke on the gunner and i was driving on warthog two with sean as my gunner first things first the first area actually went really well we didn't have any real problems driving through the first set of this level getting that first checkpoint and even going on to the next areas we were really good as a team in total like we were just kicking butt making our way through this level without dying we were feeling really good about ourselves just in general this whole part is super chaotic at times and we're doing really good just driving our way through it we did eventually die but even then things weren't too bad and it would only take us a couple of tries to get back to where we were but the biggest part that just broke us was that final checkpoint where you have the longest stretch that you have to drive without dying because at this point the spartans and elites were all beaten and battered none of us had shields and we have to make this long drive where there's sentinel shooting at us there's flood shooting at us it's this huge thing and we probably died well over a hundred times or reset well over a hundred times in this last stretch just because we would die a lot of the times without even getting out of the first area. Eventually, we tried changing up the methods a little bit where we would try running it with Luke and Sean in the passenger seats because it seemed like a lot of the flood would shoot them out of the turrets. And we did make some progress with this, but things were just absolutely wild with how many times we had to do this part over and over again. I think Luke was really losing his mind the most because at one point he just started playing some music that sounded like it came straight out of his iPod from 2007 and he was just going ham. None of us could hear each other talk, but we definitely heard Luke singing. So after some trial and error with Dragon Force, Evanescence, some Fortnite parody and the Pokemon theme, we actually managed to have a run where we were progressing through really well. Like we were just hitting all of the hits that we needed to hit. We were dodging sentinels left and right. We were swerving around platforms, falling out of the sky. It was wild. It was crazy. We were making progress and Dim was getting a little bit ahead of the group a bit, or at least we were going as fast as we could, but Dim was driving this like he was playing Forza and he did get a little bit further ahead, even though we kind of were like, hey dude, kind of back here. We're trying to keep up the best we can, Dim. Don't forget about us. And Dim took the final ramp a little bit too early where Sean and I were just a little bit behind and we could not keep up with the platforms falling and the platforms fall based off of wherever the first player is. So us in the back didn't even stand a chance with how far ahead Dim managed to pull ahead in that last little stretch. So while Dim did hit the jump, since Sean and I didn't get it and we had the Iron Skull on, we ended up reverting back to the last checkpoint and we did not complete the level in that run. So we had to start over from that last checkpoint. Luke hit the music again and we were back at it again, trying to drive this part, trying over and over again. Finally, eventually though, we did manage to get another golden run going where we were keeping side by side, making progress and making our way down the ramp. And eventually we did hit the jump together-ish and we were able to finish this level, thus completing Halo 3 Lasso and also getting the Lasso Master achievement. So it was kind of a two-in-one and it was a really big celebration. We were confident at this point with all the Lassos we had completed that we could get through Halo 3, but just the long journey that it's been from all the way when we started Lasso with the the hardest of all of them Halo 2 and then getting to see how each lasso is really difficult in their own unique ways through all of this. It's been a really cool experience and getting to finish it off with a warthog run was pretty awesome. So with these achievements under our belts Luke and I both had well under 10 achievements left. I think we had six and four respectively and as of today the time of this video going up we only have a couple achievements.
achievements left and absolutely no time left to do it before Halo Infinite comes out. So it is going to be absolutely down to the wire. We are going to be running it, trying it, doing whatever it takes to get those achievements before 10 a.m. Civic Standard Time on December 8th before Halo Infinite's campaign launches to beat the goal that we set for ourselves way over a year ago when we started Halo 2 Lasso and those speed running achievements and all those other things that have kind of paved the way for what Rocket Sloth is. So if you want to see how this journey ends, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. We do have some Halo Infinite content planned out that we are going to be putting out after Infinite releases, but we will be documenting these final achievements hunting moments but it will take us a couple of days to get the video edited and put out but you will see whether or not we did manage to pull it off in time a couple of days after infinite releases just because we need time to edit but anyways thank you guys all so much for watching and supporting us through this entire journey this last video will go into those final achievements we have and also talk about some of the other achievements that we didn't do dedicated videos on like halo 4 lasso or some of those other achievements as well so we'll get everything kind of wrapped up once we can finally get that video edited and if we can finish up those last achievements. Also, thanks to Sean for helping us out. Make sure you guys go to his stream and call him Shane in his chat. I'm sure he'd really appreciate it. But that's it for today. We'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.